welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy, and today we're going to be covering Ryzen. Right here I have the Ryzen 7 1800X, and we're going to be doing a showdown against the Intel i7 6900K Broadwell E CPU. So it's going to be X370 versus X99. Now I'm not going to go all over all the features between these two uh, CPUs. Most of you guys probably know them all anyway, so there's not really much point. I'll basically just say they are both 8-core CPUs, both 16 threads, and um, clock speed wise, I've set them both to 4 GHz on all of their 8 cores, just to keep it nice and uh, easy in that regard. So I'll talk a little bit now about the overclocking and then we'll go into the benchmark. So overclocking the 1800X was a very interesting affair. I was talking to Steve from Hardware Unboxed and Brian from Tech City a lot lately and uh, because we've all been trying to overclock our Ryzen CPUs and it just seems very, very strange. So no matter what I did, it would not go above 4 GHz. It would just sit there. It would not go to 4.1. Now you might be saying to me, well, Kevin, it says on the box it goes to 4 GHz. That's true, but it will only do it on one core. The rest sat for me at 3.7 GHz. So it would only do it on that one, and through XFR, it actually went up a bit higher than that. It was actually closer to 4.1 on that single core. But, um, yeah, I, I thought that was quite interesting. But then when I went to go do some overclocking, I thought getting them all eight on 4 GHz would be a cakewalk. But no, it was very, very difficult. I had a lot of trouble. And, yeah, it's just... A lot of people aren't really managing to get, as of right now, from everything I've heard from all the other reviewers and other people in the industry, it seems like 4, point, or 4 gigahertz or 4.1 seems to be the go. You Maybe if you get lucky, you'll get 4.2 out of them. But they do not go much higher than that. And with that being said, I had to set the memory to 2133 megahertz um, just to keep it at 4 gigahertz. So I even touched the memory a little bit. It, it just wasn't having it. So very interesting in the overclocking department. However, uh, first let's talk about the specs of the rig. So the uh, X370 rig was running the uh, Aorus Gaming 5 motherboard. Very, very solid there. They're both running the exact same um, Corsair Dominator Platinum memory at 2133 MHz. The same GPU, the Gigabyte G1 Gaming GTX 1080. Uh, so it was nice and fair in that regard. I tried to match everything as best I could to give you guys uh, the most fair showdown I possibly can. So I'll show you what the uh, Broadwell E, this is actually my personal rig, this is the specs on it, so of course we got the 6900K, same memory, same GPU, all the rest of it. Both of these guys are running pretty decent motherboards as well, so it's not like they're running a bad motherboard. Um, the MSI X99A is uh, Gaming Pro Carbon is, is a very solid motherboard, and the same with that Aorus Gaming 5, although I would think there's still improvements to be made there on that Gigabyte board, which can be handled later on through BIOS updates. But without further ado, let's jump into the benchmarks and see how the 1800X performs versus the 6900K. So first we're going to do some productivity stuff, and then we're going to be jumping into some gaming benchmarks at all three major resolutions, 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. So let's get into it.
are back. So quite interesting there. Um, you see the productivity results are phenomenal. The 1800X score is very, very good in all of them. It beat the 6900K. And that's saying a lot considering the price point it's coming in at, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But yeah, very, very good in productivity. However, interestingly enough, when we got to gaming, um, with the exception of Deus Ex, which I think was getting GPU bottlenecked, and that's why those scores were pretty much the same on both CPUs, the 1080p results um, were quite disappointing to me, if I'm honest with you guys. Uh, I, I expected better than that. However, when we went up through the resolutions, it got a lot more solid. And it's just quite a bizarre thing. You would think with such great productivity scores, um, it would also do quite well in the games at you know, 1080p, and that would scale upwards. But no, it's, it's quite bizarre there, so I'm not really 100% sure of what's going on. It was very confusing to me when I actually was doing uh, the testing, but those are the results, and I ran every benchmark twice to make sure these were very, very accurate, so these are all as accurate as I can get them to be. But yeah, quite interesting uh, there. So let's move over now and talk about temperatures then. So um, as I said earlier, this was running at 4 gigahertz. In order to keep it at that overclock, um, if you can even call it that, uh, I had to run 1.42 volts. That's quite a bit. And um, uh, I tried 4 point, uh, 1.41 and, and it was just not having it. So 1.42 was just, it just had to be there. But even at that voltage, with the deep cool cooler on there, that air cooler, 120 mil, um, it was doing quite well. It was hovering in the IDA 64 stress test after after you know 15 minutes. It would sit sort of high 60s, um, maybe barely touch 70 degrees, and that's really really solid. Uh, AMD, it's a big win there because obviously they solder down the uh, lid, so that's really really good. Um, Intel, just please, oh my god, this is one thing you could learn from AMD, so please copy, because the temperatures were actually very, very solid. I do not know what the thermal limit is, I can tell you for sure there was no thermal throttling, but if you guys know what the thermal limit is, please let me know in the comments section down below, because I don't know what it was, but it was, most of the time in the stress test, it was sitting like 67, 68 type thing, and when you're playing games, it would probably sit around, I don't know, 63 or something like that. So yeah, very solid in the temperatures department. Which brings us now to the conclusion, basically, and what do I make of the Ryzen 7 1800X CPU, and how does it compare to Broadwell E? So it does great in productivity. If you're a streamer, an editor, a heavy multitasker, anyone who needs it for, uh, needs a good CPU for productivity type stuff, this is going to be absolutely fantastic. If you have a business and you're constantly needing to buy um, these type of uh, CPUs, like maybe you were stuck on Broadwell E before or Haswell E, you need it for the productivity type stuff to keep everything nice and efficient, definitely take a look at these guys. If you're not doing any gaming at all, this is going to be a very, very solid CPU in terms of productivity. However, when we get to gaming, it gets a it gets a bit more weird. At 1080p, I was quite disappointed. I expected more, and the 1080p results weren't really ideal. At 1440p, it was starting to look better, and at 4K, it was pretty solid. So yeah, in gaming, um, if if you're a person that is only going to be buying a Ryzen CPU, you're not going to do any productivity at all, just straight pure gaming then I would say you're probably better off going with a KB Lake CPU. Uh, honestly, even something like a 7600K would be more solid than this if all you were doing is gaming. Now, it's still a powerful CPU, don't get me wrong. And price-wise, when we compare it to the 6900K, it wins big time. So these are the prices in New Zealand. So the 1800X coming in at a pretty solid price. And then look at the 6900K. Wow, what a jump. So there's a huge price discrepancy there between these two 8-core uh, CPUs. And when you bring that into it, I would say that I can really recommend the 1800X if you are a person doing productivity and gaming. 
especially if you're a person like me who runs a 4K display or if you're someone running a 1440p display, it would also be very solid. If you are a person running a high refresh rate monitor at 1080p, say a 1080p 144Hz, then you probably do want to go towards KB Lake. As I said earlier, we definitely want to go towards KB Lake. So yeah, that's basically how I'm going to sum up uh, this showdown. Um, if you're a pure gamer, stick to KB Lake. If you're someone who's doing gaming and productivity, like me, doing photo editing and gaming, then yeah, you can look towards, especially if you use a, a high resolution monitor like I do, using a 4K display, then yeah, seriously look at the 1800X, because even though it doesn't do quite as good in gaming, are you really willing to pay all that extra money to get the 6900K? Is it really going to be worth it to you? I don't think so. And if you're just doing purely productivity stuff, then 100% look at this 1800X. It could save your business quite a bit of money. And if you're just someone doing it at home, um, it will also save you quite a bit of money. And it would ju do just as solid as the 6900K. Now I thank you all for watching this video. Please let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. I know this is going to be a crazy comment section, I'm sure, with everybody. But try to keep it civil, guys, and try to keep it factual and base it off what you've seen in this video and other videos from other great tech YouTubers out there. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.